All right, we want to look at geometric random variables. And the phrasing for this is always the number of trials until your first success. All right, so they're like um, binomial random variables, except for notice instead of bins with a capital N, I use a lowercase n. All right, um, so it's still binary, two options, success or failure. It's still independent. Um, knowing about one variable does not influence the other, and if it's not technically independent, like you're drawing from a deck of cards or sampling from a population without replacement, then as long as your sample size does not exceed 10% of the population, you're fine. Okay. Here, the number of trials is not fixed. It's the variable that we're trying to measure. How many trials does it take before your first success? All right. And it is still the same probability of success on each trial. Now, um, the first What's the smallest number of trials that you could have before you have your first success? And the answer is one. My first trial could be my first success. Now, if the probability of success is P, what's the probability that my success was on my first trial? My first success was on my first trial? Well, P. If my probability, if my first success isn't on my first trial, it means that I failed on my first trial, and now my second trial is a success. If my... Say hi, Zay. Hi. Okay, now let me finish. All right. If my first success is on my third trial, then I have two failures. I failed on my first, failed on my second, and then my success is on my third. And if my probability, my first success is on my fourth trial, then I've had Q cubed failures and then P successes. Okay, my fourth one is my success. All right. And so you can see that we start out with some probability P. And then it gets multiplied by something less than one. So this is going to get smaller. And then it gets multiplied by something less than one. And it's going to get the smaller by the same amount. And then we multiply by Q again. And we multiply by Q. Where it's really a geometric, um, it's a geometric sequence that's multiplying by Q over and over and over again. Okay. We start at P is my, so like if you think of a geometric sequences, okay. Um, G1 is P, and my ratio that I'm multiplying by is this Q, and you could find the sum of this is going to add up to exactly 1, and it goes all the way to, theoretically, you could do it an infinite number of times before you have your first success. You'd have to be really unlucky, unlucky to get an infinite number of failures before you had your first success, but in theory, the area under that distribution adds up to 1. And the cool thing is, is it always looks the same, okay? You can do different starting probabilities. Notice, if my first probability is 82, then I already have most of my bar here. I have an area of 0.82 right here. And so I'm going to multiply that by, by 1 minus P, which is 0.18, and that's why it shrinks so much. This is only 18% as tall as that guy. And then this is 18% as tall as that guy, and it shrinks off to almost nothing. If I start out at like 55%, then this shrinks... This is 45% of that height and 45% of that height, but all of these bars will have to add up to one. And if I keep going even further, the smaller this probability gets, the smaller I start with, and therefore I'm only having an area of 0.32 here. All the rest of these need to add up to the rest, 0.68. And so it decreases by 68% and 68% and 68% and 68%, but all these bars add up to one. And so as I make this smaller, you see that it starts tall, but it's always this exponential decay towards zero, and the area of all of these bars adds up to exactly one, okay? Um, and we can talk a little bit more about mean, standard deviation, all that good stuff. All right, so what formulas do we have? So this is the formula that I just talked about. The probability that x equals n is one minus p, so you fail n minus one times. If my first success is gonna be on my fifth trial, then I've had five minus one or four failures. So the probability of failure to the fourth times the probability of success, all right? Um, so very self-explanatory formula if you understand that table that I drew out in the last place. How many rolls of a fair die do you expect before I roll a five? Hopefully you would say, hmm, well, there's a one out of six chance of rolling a five, so probably six rolls. And you would be exactly correct. The expected value, the expected number of rolls before your first success is one over P, which in this case is one over one six. You multiply by the reciprocal and you get six. The standard deviation is Q square root of Q over P squared. So in this case, it would be 
probability of failure, 5 6, divided by 1 6 squared, okay, or 1 over 36. And if you multiply by the reciprocal, you get the square root of um, 6 square root of 30, okay, because um, you get 36 times 5 divided by 6. So you get the square root of 30, which is about 5 and a half. Okay, um, that's the standard deviation. Sometimes it only takes you one roll, sometimes it takes you like 12 rolls, but somewhere in there, you're expecting to get your first five, all right? So what is the probability of taking more than 10 rolls for my first five? Well, this is an interesting formula, okay? Because if it's gonna take more than 10 rolls, it means that I've had 10 failures, right? If it's going to take more than 10 rolls, it means what's the probability of having 10 failures? And then after that, whether it, whether my first success happens on my 11th or 12th or 13th, I don't actually care. I just want the probability of more than 10 is 10 failures. If 10 failures happens, then it is taking me, then after that, the sum of all remaining probabilities is the chance of me having, um, my success eventually and i get 0.162 all right um so calculating probabilities this calculates a specific probability okay what is the probability that it takes me three rolls to get my first success well for a dice five six would have happened twice and one six would happen once and we would get 25 over 216, which comes out to 0.116, okay? So there's a 1 6 chance that it happens on my first roll, and it's going to go down after that, okay? More than 10, all those bars, all the way up to infinity, adds up to 0.116, all right? Um, your calculator can do all of these things really, really nicely, okay? So um, just like we had a binome PDF and CDF, here, all we need, it's not a fixed number trial, so that's why there's no NPK. This is just your probability of success, and this is where you want your first success on. And PDF will just fill in one little box right here. This will do that formula that we just talked about, okay? Um, this would equal um, my Q to the N minus 1 times P, where I have N minus 1 failures, all, or K minus 1, excuse me, K minus 1 failures, all K minus 1 of these were failures, and then we have that. Oh, this shouldn't have a zero here, Mr. Kranz. Okay. That's not there. First success, second, third, fourth. Okay. Um, first trial has my first success or my second trial has my first success. All right. Um, PDF, what do you, CDF, what do you think it does? Well, it does the same thing that it does every time. It does K or less. Okay. So this is the probability of um, X being less than or equal to K. My first success being less than or equal to K. So here, I'm an 80% free throw shooter. Not really. I, I haven't shot free throws in a while. What's the probability that he makes his first free throw on his first attempt? So I would want to do probability that X equals 3. This is the probability that X equals K. So I'm going to do PDF. Geomet PDF. And my probability is 0.8. And I want my success to be on the third. If I want... Um, after his fourth, probability that X is greater than four is literally I had oh, four failures. I can do it like that. And then the probability that X is less than or equal to two, I can do um, geom CDF 0.8 comma two. All right. So I'm going to grab a calculator real quick and do these three. Um, Maybe. Yeah, there it is. So the first geom PDF, 0.8 and 3. So second distribution, geom PDF, 0.8 and 3. And we get a probability of 0.032. You could verify with this formula that it comes out the same. Okay. Um, 0.2 to the fourth. Probability that it that I miss my first four 
and ha have a success sometime after that is very slim, 0 0.0016. Probability that my first make is within my first two shots, Geom CDF, my probability is 0.8, and the probability that I have my first success in my first two shots is 96%, okay? So this is 0 0.0016, and this is 0.96. So um, that is a geometric distribution. Always looks the same. It's just a matter of how high you start and how quickly you decline, all right? Um, formulas are pretty straightforward. Very similar to binomial, except for we're, our variable of interest is when is your first success. So good luck. See you later.